The pilgrim trails across France converged at Osterbat in the foothills of the Pyrenees. There, the group of 20 or so pilgrims who had been traveling alongside me since I'd left Tours swelled to about 70. Some were prosperous citizens, some probably on the run from justice, a few drunks and several monks and clergymen. Several languages were spoken, including Flemish, a German tongue, and a southern French language called Oc. Nevertheless, there was no lack of communication among them, and as we crossed the Pyrenees, they sang, played games, told stories, and in several cases, had love affairs. While my baby and I kept mostly to ourselves. Ganz schön frech, die mit ihrem Kind. Hush now. Hm? I'm sorry. He has to cry himself out before he'll fall asleep. It will give you a strong voice one day, won't it? Do you have children? Richtig dreist. nicht einfach mal seine Ruhe haben? Der Weg aus Babenberg war doch anstrengend genug. Ein Kind hat ja auch gar nichts verloren. Stimmt doch, oder? Psst, jetzt ist aber gut. Come back. What are you doing? Please. You should come get back out of the water. Me. It's freezing. My ring. I lost my ring. Dear Lord, please show mercy. <laughs> leave without my ring. Where are you? Where did you go? to me. Please come back to me. I found it.
yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You are a very kind woman. So very, very kind. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are you getting warmer? I am, thank you. I can see this ring is very precious to you. It, it was a gift from my stepmother. She thought I would stay forever, but I didn't. Why did you leave? Oh, I... I... I thought I didn't belong. She always said I was her daughter, but I was sure she was lying. I was so selfish and so stupid. Too stupid to see I really was happy. Tell me about your stepmother. She was such a kind woman. So very, very kind. Maybe you really weren't happy. I don't know. I was very young and thought I was unhappy because I didn't live close to the sea. But in the end, the sea did not feel the same about me. The cold there made me sick. It took away my sight. Courageous of you to leave. You did what your heart told you to. I was stupid. So, so stupid. Ah, that's why you went on the pilgrimage. Yes. So that Sir James might see my devotion and I will be united with my mother in heaven. I'm just not as kind as you. Not kind at all. Actually, we two have quite a few things in common. I too am trying to make amends with the one man I loved the most. I was told he went straight to Santiago. You will know soon. Not soon enough. It's still four weeks till I get there. He'll be there, I'm sure of it. I hope so. I just feel... I just feel that with every day that passes, I'm losing him a bit more. And that the only thing I can allow myself still to hope for is not love, but forgiveness. I understand. Hey, hush now. Not long now and our journey will be over, hmm? The woman's name was Alba. She came from a small town somewhere in Catalonia. I quickly got used to her constantly feeling out for her stepmother's ring and the sad guilt that would always follow in her milky eyes. I wasn't sure if she appreciated my company, but I couldn't leave her on her own either. By the time we reached Los Arcos, she'd stopped talking, 
while I kept on dropping a kind word here and there to let her know I was still by her side. Alba believed herself to be of weak mind and body, and yet she walked the Camino with a strong sense of purpose that willed her onward. It made me wonder about what I'd told her about my own journey. Did I hope for love, or was I really traveling because I needed him to forgive me? But what was there to forgive? My decision to marry Alfred had been in the best interest of the people of Shiring. It was a sacrifice I had to make to stop the evil reign of William Hamley. These questions had haunted me for a long time now. But if I really was going to see Jack soon, it was time to make up my mind. Around Lyon, the path began to gradually turn uphill. It was only two more weeks till we'd reached Santiago. The baby was in a good mood, and so, surprisingly, was Alba. After Astorga, the trail got more difficult. Alba became slower and slower, and we had to rest more. She became quiet again. The strain on her old body grew, and she worried that she might not be able to reach the end. Still, we managed to push onward. The next morning, she refused to get up. Her breathing was disturbingly shallow, and she hardly noticed me touching her forehead. Everything hurts, she said, and urged me to continue without her. Of course I stayed with her. I brought her food and water and sat by her side. But day after day, her condition grew worse. She kept on urging me to go, to find Jack, saying the monks of Ponferrada would take care of her. I'd hardly known her, and most of the time she'd tried to push me away as if she considered herself a nuisance that slowed me down and who didn't deserve company. It wasn't until a few moments before she died that, for the first time, she smiled at me, and I like to believe that she saw me smile back. I still like to believe that here, in this unlikely place, dying next to a near stranger, she'd found a moment of serenity and happiness but she had not reached Santiago. When I left, that thought still haunted me, to see that a journey could come to an end so suddenly. But what would be different if she had reached Santiago? Could she have been disappointed by what she found? After months of hard travel, the child and I finally reached Santiago de Compostela. In the evening, we attended mass in the great cathedral, then started to roam the town looking for my dear Jack. It was almost dawn when finally a priest pointed me to an inn close by. Buenos dias. Do you understand me? Siento mucho bien, pero no tenemos camas disponibles. Um, no, I don't need a room. I was told a friend of mine stayed here some time ago. A red-haired Englishman called Jack. Do you remember him? Eu sou te falo en galego, miña rula. Francais? English?
¡Qué cousiña! ¡Eche rubio! Sí, redhead. Have you seen his father, Padre del Nino? Jack Builder? Ven siendo un peregrino. What? E un peregrino? Oh, no, no. He's not a pilgrim. Enton, ¿qué ven siendo? Um. Let me show you something. He's a mason. He builds things like that. Ah, este mason. Albanel. Sí, sí, a mason. It's the same word in Galician. <laughs> Por aquí pasan una morea de masons. No me poderías decir algo más sobre él. Well, he's a mason and he has red hair. He's also very knowledgeable. But how do I tell you that? The man I'm looking for loves to read. Anda, esto es de Domasón. Sí, it's his. Um, oím falar de un masón que dice que se dedica a traducir libros en Toledo. Por lo visto, di que se llama Jack. Yes, Jack. Have you seen him? No sé cuál será o su apellido, pero ven es cierto que nunca hay muchos masones rubios a los que les guste leer. Se si tan desesperada está porque no vaya a Toledo a comprobarlo por sí misma. Entonces marchó para Toledo. He went to Toledo. A Toledo marchó, sí. Di que o teu Jack. Podría estar en Toledo. All right. So, I will go to Toledo then. Gracias. I just pray that I understood you correctly. <laughs> <laughs>